O'Neill Outside Radio is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Zach Brown Southern Grind Knives. Only the best make the cut. The Whitetail Institute of North America. The gold standard for food plots. Tough Shed. Great storage sheds and custom buildings. Works. Power and garden tools. Fisher's Choice. The ideal solution to live bait. True Turn Hooks. Hook more fish. Roadrunner Lures. Outfishing ordinary lures since 1959. Crocodile Bay Lodge. Costa Rica's best fishing and resort destination. And by O'Neill's new Real Gun and Marine Oils. Naturally, the best. From Black Powder Headquarters and the Bojangle Studio at Three Falls Cabin in the North Georgia Mountains, it's time for O'Neill Outside. For anything in the outdoors, this is your source. Listen in and call the show with your comments or questions. And now, here's O'Neill. Welcome, everybody. This is O'Neill with O'Neill Outside on an unused Saturday morning. I hope you'll join us. We've got a lot of things to talk about this morning. We've got the uh, to tell you that we're on WSB, AM, and FM all across the country in the sports broadcast nation into 83 stations nationwide, Seattle to L.A. to Texas to Florida to Maine, and we hope you'll take the time to join us. We have the Who Is This feature today, the Radio Prize Package, the Medal of Honor Tribute, the Southern Grind Guest Book Questions, Hayes Auto Show, I forgot to get him to tell me where that is, and of course your calls. The telephone numbers are 404-872-0750, 404-872-0750, or outside the Atlanta call area and across the country is 800-972-8255 800-972-8255 woman williams is here this morning yes indeed getting up here at four o'clock she's looking great she handles most everything and uh, scott maxim is joining us again this morning he's adding to the show with his knowledge about guns and shooting and we'll have some discussions about that from time to time so at 407 welcome to the program everyone we hope you'll take the time to join us this morning it's the memorial day weekend hmm that means you probably don't have to work monday but there's so much more to memorial day than just you're taking off and cooking some barbecue this is a memorial weekend for those men or and women who died while in service to their country this is not veterans day it's memorial day and before we uh uh, get fur- well, as we get further into the show, Gail Williams has recommended that I show everyone my flag. Yes, I do. And did. you can't see it on radio, but if you'll tune us in at O'Neill Outside Facebook page, maybe it'll give you a little bit of background as to one of the reasons why O'Neill has such a difficult time getting through the Medal of Honor tribute. So... We'll have the program for the next two hours. No politics, no finances. It's all outdoors with you and your family, and we'll be back. Welcome back, everyone. 12 after the hour. We're going to get to a lot of outdoor subjects this morning. And one of the reasons I brought Scott uh, in here today, he Scott's a gun guy. Uh, how many guns do you own? Do you know? Uh, I would say probably somewhere. Whoops, there we go. Uh, I'd say probably somewhere in the area of about a dozen. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, not not over the top. I keep my stuff pretty purpose-driven. Yeah, I see. So I've got, for example, I have three 9mm handguns. One of them is just to go out to the range. It's my little sports car gun. Mm-hmm. Got another one for self-defense and one for practice. Okay. Uh, twenty two rifle. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I have. Yeah. Purpose-driven for taking down squirrels. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, shotguns. Various okay. shotguns. Semi-autos and over-unders. Over-unders for skeet and and uh trap and the and the semi auto strictly for trap all right i want your comment then uh because i get these questions so much and we'll get to the southern grind questions in a few minutes i get a lot of questions people and they're they they mean well and they're purposeful but they say o'neill i'm going to put my eight-year-old in the stand with me what kind of rifle what caliber rifle should he have 
why don't you comment about that and about getting youngsters started in hunting well make some choices as far as that's concerned it's really going to depend on the child more than anything else really and uh you gotta have to take a look at them and, and how mature I guess they would be with said firearm. The easiest thing to start them off with, uniformly, if you're gonna do, get in the shooting sports, a BB gun, yeah, a pellet gun, mm-hmm. something very simple. I would even say go so far as to say a single shot only, mm-hmm. in so that they have to learn their their control, their loading, they have to learn safe operation, and they have to do it every single time they want to shoot the right. gun. So that makes a lot of sense. If you start moving into actual say cartridge fires or something uh, keep it on the light side for an eight-year-old uh, you know you're talking about 410 shotties if you want to go out and hit the skeet and trap range if you're talking about going into the stand I don't think I'd even go into the stand with a kid so I don't know if I would even recommend a gun for mm-hmm. going deer hunting for a child that young well you don't learn to shoot out of a stand you learn to shoot at the rain and absolutely <laughs> and skeet and trap skeet trap and, and the rain Excellent to help you. With, shoot. Yeah, help you with the leading on the skeet and the trap. But um, you are absolutely correct when it comes to the, to the accuracy. You have to be accurate when you're hunting. You have to have a very good control of, of your gun and know where that bullet is going to land. Absolutely, there shouldn't be any doubt. No doubts, and that's where the practice comes into play. And that's you know, if you do have a child that's that's starting to learn, a light caliber weapon would be the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and as far as a deer gun for an eight year old, I don't think it exists. I'll just be completely right. honest. I, I just, agree. I don't think it's a good idea for a child that young to be out there with a 308 or a 30 out six. Uh, yeah, it might be fun, but it's probably going to put the kid on well, his butt. I, we, uh, I have a lot of callers that, uh, and I agree with them. You should, if to, to get a youngster, boy or girl, involved in hunting, they should be hunting squirrels. Yeah, absolutely. You know, shoot 30, 40 times a day. Yeah. Limits 12 and up. Yeah, and uh, they can be taken with a pellet gun again. Yes. Um, there are very many pellet guns actually out there that are pushing those little uh, those little projectiles close to 22 speed. Uh-huh. I mean, so they, they are definitely lethal enough for a squirrel hunt. No question about it. Yeah. And, uh, again, great great because the kid won't be intimidated. The, a lot of things, too, is what people don't think about is when that kid pulls the trigger, depending on how powerful that gun is, it could scare him off the sport. You know, Absolutely. I, I don't think people really think about that. You know, the recoil, the the noise, and the shock of it, you know. Yeah, you don't need to stand against the wall to shoot. No. <laughs> no, you certainly do not. That, that guy knocked def- down. Because, well, let's be honest, if you're against the wall, you're not outside. Yeah. There you go. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Karen, what's my out time? Uh, is it 22 or 25? What is it? 22. 22. Okay, that's why I had that wrong. All right, I thought so. I lost my ins and out sheets here. So, all right, let's, uh, oh, we're going to be at 22. We've is. got time to do this. So oh. let's get Woman Williams in here and uh, run the radio prize package. Did you find it? No, I thought you had it. I told you I did not have it. Uh, Here's one that's probably reasonably correct. <laughs> But I do. I, There's a chance that but, it's correct. Okay. It's going to be close. There we go. Right, hold on. Here All we right. Go. You got one? How's that? You want that? That's your in your oh, out time. Oh, boy. How, that, how did you get a hold of that? You've been over here messing on my desk. That's oh, wrong. no. This is what I gave to Scott. It's yeah, wrong. Yeah, that's, that's for my edification. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that there was you go. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the three suges. I've got it. While you okay. read the rules and the prize package question, I mean, the rules and the prize package, i got to reconnect here. Okay, no, go for it. Okay, if you're 18 years old or older and you have not won a prize package within the past year oh. and you answer the question correctly, you can win a bottle of O'Neill's Oils. Those aren't essential oils either. Those are oils that you use for your rod and reels and your guns and all that stuff. A Bojangles gift card, a Swaggerty's voucher, and you know, of course you know that's the wonderful sausage. The Whitetail Institute DVD, Realtree hat and decal combo, a Georgia DNR regulations magazine, data sport fishing game forecaster, two cans of Fisher's Choice baits, okay. a Thunder Chicken by Captain Mark Noble. That is a casting float. Yes. Yes. Uh, a Thorough, Thorough Good Boots hat, an Arctic ice pack, mm-hmm. 
and two packages of bug band and a wristband. Okay. It's some. It's going to be something in that neighborhood. Some. It's a big box of stuff. This says four twenty seven. Is that too old? Uh, well, there's a new one around here somewhere, but I can't find it. And the prize package manager is probably going to cut our heads. Okay. Off. And what's the other rule? Already not did not having range. one in, in how the, long? In the past year. Okay. All right. Here is the question. And the questions are always designed not to direct attention to us, but the fact that you probably would know the answer unless you listen to the show. This is not just sports trivia. Here is your question. Last year, in 2018, we had a special segment, a special feature in the program called the Silent Hero Account. And it was an account of... Uh, heroic actions by police, fire, EMT, something of that nature. People that you don't know their names. Who or give me the company name or brand that uh, heard that segment. The brand of product company name that sponsored the uh, silent hero account in 2018 and uh cory uh I'll, I'll hate to have to advise you that my screen has gone blank for a few minutes so if i have calls you'll have to advise me of that so is if you don't have enough to do you got this <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so cory the way this works is cory is at wsb with the call screener jason the signal goes from our little cabin here in the mountains at the Bojangles studio. It goes to WSB. Then it goes to Karen and Brian Green in Peachtree City, Georgia. Then it's transferred to Houston, Texas for the Sports Broadcast Radio Network. It is a mess of engineering. <laughs> and a lot of cables. <laughs> there's cables. You can't walk across this little room here because of the cables. It's really something. So there's the, your question, and when Corey has a proper answer, then we'll give away the radio prize package. It's 20 and a half after the hour. We'll wait for that to occur, then we'll come back in at 25. But this is O'Neill with O'Neill Outside, the number one live outdoor-based radio talk show in the world, and it's because of our audience and the stations that have been put together so that you can listen to outdoor activities on the weekend instead of another day of politics. Wow. Haven't you had enough? I have. And I am totally and completely restricted from bo voicing my preferences with regards politics. Did you know that, Scott? Uh, I was that an that official story? edict coming from on high at WSB? Absolutely. I, I got involved in politics a few years ago on the show for a few minutes, and I was told right away, O'Neill, we have someone else to do that. <laughs> And it, that someone else isn't capable of hosting your show, it, they, so yeah, you need to stick to what you got. Well put. Well put. Yeah, I'd love to see them try to do this one. <laughs> that would be funny. That's right. <laughs> All right, we have more O'Neill outside and more outdoors and very possibly the answer to the radio prize package upon our return. We'll be back. Welcome back, everyone. We have a lot of calls right now. We want to get to every single one of them. We want to get the radio prize package out of the way right now. And the question was, in 2018, we had a very special sponsor that, that uh, partnered us with us on the Silent Hero account. So we're going to go to Anthony now, and uh, Corey can bring them. Anthony. Good morning, Anthony. You're on the air. Good morning, Daniel. Hey there. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Good. What got you up so early this morning? Oh, uh, out here working. All right, good idea. Great to have a job. All right, job what what was the company name? What was the company name that sponsored the Silent Hero account? Fire Aid. Fire Aid. That's right. You need you need five or six of those guys in the house, in the laundry room, the equipment room, the garage, the truck, the car, and the barn. How about that? That's right. That's right. You bet. Well, you got quite a prize package, sir. Thank you. I try to you listen bet. to you and, uh, every Saturday morning. 
Well, thank you very much. The loyal listeners, I value you highly. <laughs> even occasional <laughs> listeners but in any case uh there you are you've got a nice prize package headed your way we'll take a couple of weeks to get it to you how about that all right thank you mighty fine have a great weekend pal you too all right there you go now let's talk to uh let's talk to donna on line number two good, good morning, morning donna Emil. you're on the you're on the air donna good morning <laughs> good morning i called to thank you for the hat that i won Last week. Oh, you, you, oh, that's right. Last week. You've already gotten that? Yes, it came, oh, and I wanted to tell you what happened. I wore it to the oh. place that I consider the source of all great truths, a beauty shop. Got lots okay. of compliments <laughs> on it. Okay, Among good. It, yes. Well, I want to tell you, you're spreading the gospel here. I'm trying. A 14-year-old today daughter of one of the, the hairdressers, um, uh-huh had gone fishing with her older 25-year-old brother at the ranger camp hunting trout, and I decided to give the box. I won in addition to the hat last week. You know, I won the prize package a month ago. Wasn't really sure what to do with it. This young lady is a, a serious lover of fishing and has racks that she has from her hunting. So I wanted to let you know where my prize package went. And I just wanted Wonderful. to encourage people to remember their daughters and granddaughters when they're going outside. Cause I thought that was kind of a cool story that she's the only young lady that age that I know that, that Tom has been brought up in the tradition. And I also want to remind everybody, it is still coyote call hunting month. <laughs> I hate coyotes. As you remember, through the end of May. So, um, but I wanted you to know that I got because I was at the beauty shop. We got a lot of compliments on on your hat. The subject Wonderful. came up, and and your box went to a young lady named Gracie. So, um, you did well, well put in both occasions. Thank you, sir. And Appreciate I thank it. you very much for being such a loyal listener to the program. Yes, sir. And Get out there, in folks, touch and, with and, us. Yes, tell people to kill those coyotes. I do hate them. <laughs> We've been talking about coyotes this morning. You already. bet. We've already yeah. had some off-air discussions about that, and we're going to get to it, too. In a few Ooh, I will listen Thank rapturously. You. Thank you, sir. Bye. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Uh, thanks for the hat. I love it. Bye. Good deal. Okay, let's uh, before we get too far away from the stream here, let's talk to Andy. He's on line number three, calling O'Neill outside. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, O'Neill. I tell you what, that's a tough act to follow for sure. But yes, it to, is. Uh, I have to second her her opinion. Uh, for for years, my my grandmother would drag me to the beauty shop with her, and uh, when I oh. got old enough to drive, that turned into, of course, me giving her rides up there. And and uh, man, I tell you what, I would hang out for hours up there with them, just listen to, to, to the little ladies talk just about just God knows what was, was discussed in there. And of course I was sworn to secrecy, so I can't really go into what was said, but, uh, uh, but anyway, I had a question for the gun guy, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Um, on. I, have, what you got? I have recently, I, I, I've grown up on, uh, on pistols. I'm a pistol guy. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I, uh, started off on Glocks and, you know, I've had a little bit of everything, Glocks and a Kimber. Uh, Kimber, that's a cool one. I, but I, I don't like oh, carrying it anywhere because I'm scared I'm going to, you know, uh, get it scuffed up or scratched or whatever. But uh, anyway, I recently bought a uh, a new gun a while back. It's a, I wouldn't call it cheap, uh, but it was a, a lesser expensive uh, carry pistol. It's the, uh, the Smith & Wesson SD40VE for value enhanced. Um, I've put close to 800 rounds through it, and I've never had a problem with it. Uh, wow. I drive a tow truck, and I mean, this thing, it's awesome. It, it fits that my hand perfect, and the, you know, you, you take the slide off, and it, it's, it's basically a lesser expensive Glock. Um, but my question is, of course, my friends are kind of ragging on me for, you know, carrying a, quote, cheap pistol. What could I expect to fail on that pistol, if anything, and what could I do to it, little you know, upgrades to improve its, I guess, whatever. I've not had a problem with it uh, so far, not had a jam or anything. That's the biggest thing. If you're not having any problems and it ain't broke, you don't really need to fix it. Yeah. Uh, And as far as pistols are concerned, if your friends are out there banging on your choice of guns, uh, I I call that a breach of etiquette, my friend, because that gun works for you. 
It doesn't yeah, have to work that's for what them. I tell them. It, you know, I, I, I mean, I've got the, the twelve hundred dollar Kimber nineteen eleven, but I'm not going to carry that thing, you know, at work. Uh, no, it, and I, absolutely I need not. It makes no sense. Truck. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I'm a purpose driven guy, and that Smith is a very good uh, carry piece. Um, as far as upgrading it, I don't know. You, you might lo- look at upgrading the sights if you want to go that route. Maybe some tritium night sights for low light conditions. Uh, yeah, that, I'm that's not sure. definitely the low light sights was, was yeah. on the top of the list. Yeah, and but. the only other thing I would possibly think of is, is if you're looking for some increased accuracy, maybe a match grade barrel, if it's available for it. You could swap it out and drop a match grade barrel in it, but that would be about the only thing I could think of to improve that pistol. Okay, cool. Because I mean, I Good like the, the trigger. Good trigger answer. pull is perfect. Everything about it is, it, it's great. You know, I tell you what, I want, I want one of them, uh, one of them uh, Mossberg uh, Shockwave uh, twelve gauge. Uh, those things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't go those wrong things. with a Mossy. I'll just tell you straight up. As far as shotguns go, they're my favorite manufacturer for one oh, yeah, reason. I, one reason is that safety that sits up on the tang of the gun, mm-hmm. because right. it allows ambidextrous usage for anybody i i love mossies man that's a good call right yeah i've got a, a mossberg 500 and i had a uh a, a again the lesser expensive uh in me but i had a maverick 88 by mossberg and i mean i had that thing for decades and it was just an awesome shotgun but yeah, the safety though was down by the trigger guard uh so it's a lot like a i guess a bb gun is what i compared it to safety wise right. but, but yeah those, those shock waves are or something. I don't know what they're good for, but but they're uh, they're pretty cool. Yeah, no question about it. And I would say this too: a lot of people are, are poo pooing inexpensive firearms. I won't say cheap because there is a difference. Inexpensive right. firearms are well made and uh, you know decently put together. The cheap ones, of course, aren't. But right. a lot of guns these days are being manufactured in Turkey, and a lot of people are banging on it for you know lesser quality this and that. Not true. Mm-mm. Not true. They're I using agree. the exact Speak, same machinery of, that the Western guys are using to make their guns. Yeah. Speaking of the, the lesser expensive options, have you, uh, um, our, our friends over at High Point have redone their pistols? Have you seen the, the new I have. High Point Actually, that was what, the new uh, High Point, I believe it's the C9 is what it's called, the 9mm right. pistol. Yeah. The, nine, the yeah, biggest C9. thing at the SHOT Show this year, believe it or not, the budget pistol was, it was the most noise at SHOT Show, and for good reason. It's been redesigned, it's been upgraded, and yes, I do want to get my hands on one to try it out, but unfortunately, I can't find one. Really? I, yeah, my, I cannot uh, my find one. My first pistol was a was a high point 40 um 150 dollars brand new at the gun show in marietta years ago uh, and i mean it, it had a problem you know it wouldn't feed right and I, I finally figured out that you know if it it's all in the grip you have to have a you have to know a, you have to know the grip and if you if you had any leniency in your grip at all it, it would not feed so for that that taught me my grip uh, was 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 shooting that daggum high point for you know for a couple of years, well, and but. that and that goes back to what you said, Scott, about the ones that are for you, right, 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 yeah, and that's another thing too. Yeah, a lot of times you'll get a failure to feed or a failure to reject simply because you're limp wristing the gun. Mm-hmm. If right. you're not, you know, holding it firmly enough, then yeah, you may have a problem with that. And right. uh, but you're correct. What you you actually by accident just learned some awesome uh, gun control there. Um, as far as like how to hold it to keep it from malfunctioning, that's that's a win. Great discussion. Oh, yeah. Glad you called, Andy. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good Memorial Day, and uh, like like you said, keep keep our fallen guys and gals and everybody in your thoughts. Uh, I'm gonna go back to work. You thank you, sir. That's what that that's what this holiday is about. I'm glad you're mentioning it, and we'll Absolutely. see you soon, my, pal. My grandfather All right. was Seventh Beach Battalion uh-huh. in World War II, and he thankfully he made it home, but. He, he can't tell a story without remembering uh, his friends that, that, that stayed at, at Omaha Beach. Oh, wow. wow. Omaha Beach. Yeah. Yeah. D-Day invasion. All right, pal. Have a great weekend. Yes, sir. You too. Okay. You bet. 36 Bye. after the hour. This is O'Neill with O'Neill Outside. This morning I have with me Scott Maxim and Woman Williams. And when we get back, we're going to talk to Don from i'm not going to say so and then we'll do words of wisdom from no you're not going to do that today okay not going to do words of wisdom i have a headache oh i'm sorry baby
I think it's Scott. I had a headache when he was here last time. Oh, it's Scott. It's your yeah. fault. <laughs> it's all my fault. It's always my fault. It's always your I'm fault. responsible for everything. Wrong and, with well, this woman. except Karen, you know, she fouls up a lot down in Peachtree City. She fouls up the <laughs> engineer. <laughs> okay, we got to get out of here. We've got to take a break at uh, 37. So, this is O'Neill with O'Neill Outside, 404 872 0750 800 972 8255. And we'll talk about something when we get back. I promise. Well, now's your opportunity, if you're just listening to little O'Neill here, for you to win a Zach Brown Southern Grind Knife. This is a knife that you end up willing to your grandchildren and uh, keeping forever. This is top quality stuff, believe me. Southern Grind Knife. Now, how do you do that? Well, you go to O'Neill Outside, and right there on the home page, you'll see the Southern Grind guest book. Leave a comment, a question, an observation. And if we use that, we use them on the television show. And if I use it on radio and designate a winner, we'll use them all on the radio. But if I designate a winner, then we'll send you the Southern Grind knife. And it's probably a spider monkey. Now, this is a knife that you'll keep forever. So let's look into some of the questions or comments that are kind of worthwhile. Uh, who, let's see, Jim, uh, let's talk to, well, first of all, it's uh, Steve Seaman in Newnan, Georgia. He said, I'm fortunate to have a small pond in my backyard, which I've managed for bluegills and bass for the last 19 years. That's good. You have to do that. Is it likely that the fish acclimate to a certain fishing style? Oh, boy. Meaning lures and techniques. That if change would improve the catch i'm more fond of catching than fishing you are correct why is the interesting answer for instance here's an example after the largemouth bass spawn and their progeny begets to be an inch and a half or two inches long many of them are eaten by the larger bass so in the springtime, you should match that hatch with the size and color of your lure. Same thing for brim. After the brim hatch in late June or early July, you should use a lure or bait that matches the color and size of the small brim. So you should change your lure according to the bait fish. Now that's the same thing in a big lake like Lake Lanier. Early in the season, if you want to match the hatch, you will use a very, very small lure that matches the thread fin and bluebacks. Later in the summer, when they have gotten bigger, then your bait should be larger. So the answer to Steve's question is yes. Change the bait size and color, and you will be more effective. Isn't that great? Makes sense. Isn't that great? Gosh, O'Neill, you are so smart. On point, believable. Okay, here's a question for you. Okay. And here is the knife winner. This is from Karen Jamison in Lansing, Michigan. O'Neill, I love the show. That's always a good way to start. Exactly. Really enjoying your television radio, uh, televised radio. She watches it on Facebook every Saturday. Can you tell me when is the rut in North Georgia? I'm a new deer hunter. Scott Maxim, the floor is yours. I can answer that with a question. Yes. When was it last year? <laughs> okay. <laughs> when was it the year before? When was it since the dawn of time? <laughs> Whenever same, that deer got here, that's right. Exactly. Same time of year, every year, it's photoperiodism. Yes. The, the declining number of hours of daylight doesn't matter if it's cloudy or sunny. Wind out of the east, wind out of the west. Raining, dry, it doesn't, does it? No. And a matter of fact, we were, we were talking earlier today about this. Uh, one, one gentleman you bumped to insisted that it was when the bluebells bloomed. <laughs> yeah. It, 
is not when the bluebells bloom. No. It is when that sun starts disappearing. That's right. So we will send to Karen Jameson in Lansing, Michigan, a spider monkey. Sounds Southern good. Southern grind knife. Let's see if I can come up with another question. Here's something that's very good. Good idea. Ready? This is from Terry Toll, T-O-L-L, in Ackworth, Georgia. I don't come across a lot of hunters using hearing protection in the woods. You know, the electric hearing. Right. That's a really good idea. Uh, he said, I like the electronic hearing protection because it protects my hearing while allowing me to hear what's going on. Please mention this to the audience. An outstanding outstanding recommendation very smart recommendation because i know and we're all macho macho guys oh i don't use any here you know i don't need that i'm you know ah. yes you do those little filaments hair filaments in your ears doesn't have anything to do with your macho image when those little filaments go you can't hear well, along those lines, I actually did damage my hearing. Did you? Not not through shooting, but some, mm -hmm. something similar. I went to a, um, an auto race up at Road Atlanta, uh -huh. the Petit Le Mans. Okay. And I didn't know I needed earplugs. I'm sitting on turn one. Round the corner comes this BMW, blap, 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 blowing exhaust all over the place. And the next thing I heard was a pop in my left ear and tinnitus ever since. I'll be darned. And that is a direct result of that of that over that that loud noise. Mm -hmm. So yes, the 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 and listeners it doesn't absolutely correct can. either. No, it doesn't. It will not go away. No, I've had this it. now for about ten years. Now you've got it. And with that hearing protection, what's really great now with these new electronic ones is mm -hmm. they. He's absolutely correct. They allow you to hear everything mm -hmm. around you, so you can hear you know tracks in the woods or whatever. But as soon as it, it gets over a certain decibel limit, it cuts the sound. And it's the best of both worlds. Your hearing is protected when it needs to be. But when you need to hear something, it's loud and clear. That's right. Part of the gear that we need to have. And thank goodness. Do you have something, honey, on uh, no. Facebook? <laughs> okay. And you can watch the show live on Facebook at O'Neill Outside. So uh, give that a try. Let's I have see, someone uh, who wants to ask a gun question, but his battery is going dead okay. on his phone. Oh. And I told him to call. Get, a, get another phone call. Okay. 47 after the hour. Here's one from Steve Turner in Pine Mountain, Georgia. He says, I was wondering if there's a place in Georgia for people in wheelchairs to go and hunt white-tailed deer. Yes. Uh, Steve, all you have to do is telephone the Department of Natural Resources deer, prior to the season or during and inquire which wildlife management area can accommodate a wheelchair. And because of the American Disabilities Act, it's necessary that they do. Now, you may not have a stand to get in, but they, they will have a DM there under your arrangements to let you in to the WMA and will get you into the WMA in your wheelchair so you can hunt. That's fantastic. That? Isn't that great? That is absolutely fantastic. That is great. I had I telephoned the DNR yesterday to, to see about that and was quite frankly was quite frankly surprised. That was uh that was good. I didn't know that. No, that's that's fantastic. It's again another example of of being able to get out and enjoy a sport, mm -hmm. even though you have physical limitations. Yes, indeed, it's beautiful. And I'm sure, well, the, quite frankly, I haven't seen them, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's several of the wildlife management areas that have stands, positions, whatever, that are easily accessible. You're not just sitting in the woods right. in your wheelchair, right? And they, uh, so I think that's a great idea. I think it's fantastic. Fantastic idea. 48 after the hour, 404 872 0750 800 972 8255. To bring you up to date, guest with us today is Scott Maxim. And Woman Williams is here. Yes. With a headache. Yes. Oh. Well, you got to give it to her. She's here, even though the headache's pounding. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It was that 10th beer last night. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's that was yeah, those, definitely it. When you get to the two six pack level, you're just I mean, going to have really. A what do I expect? <laughs> <laughs> Goofy. Okay. Uh, let's see. What do we? I have somebody who wants to know what's happened to Milton Crabapple. Pardon me. Somebody wants to know where is Milton? He hadn't called. Uh, well, Milton's been turkey hunting over the last several weeks. Well, it's time for him to get I off. I know it. He's yeah. he's uh, he's getting lazy. He's worthless. Yeah. Quite frankly, he's getting yeah. old. He's about ninety-eight years old. Milton you think? Yeah. He's, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, okay. Hey, we're oh busted. my goodness. We're well, busted. We, uh, uh, thanks a lot, Corey. <laughs> All right, let's just take a stab at it at 50 yeah. after the well, hour. That's what happens when you don't have your screen Yeah, when working. I don't have my screen working here. All right, here we go. Milton, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Oh, Neil. Yes, sir. <laughs> Milton Crabapple. <laughs> Good morning, Milton. You know, I've been on hold since 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How you doing this morning? I'm 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 doing just fine. It's Saturday. It is Saturday. It's Memorial Day weekend. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. You know we're going. I hope you're doing something fun this weekend. Yes, I am. I'm going to eat barbecue. Well, that's good. We're going up to the. You know, every year they have the big crab apple Memorial Day Championship Rodeo and Bull Riding Contest. Okay. Every year. That's where we'll be going. I reckon. I hope so. I hope you enjoy it. Well, we will. You know, my nephew, he's champion so far, bull rider, been the champion for about two years. No kidding. What's his name? Tough Crab Apple. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's a good one. I'll bet he, he must be. Yes, sir. Well, how you doing, Scott? Life is good in the fast lane, sir. I'm glad to hear from you. It's been a while. Well, I haven't talked to you in a while. You seem like you sound good. Sound like you're doing okay. Yeah, life is good, sir, and I'm highly caffeinated and very motivated this morning as well. Well, I ain't motivated nor caffeinated neither one yet, but I will be. Well, yeah, <laughs> I hope so, man. You got a long weekend ahead of you to, to have some fun with. You need to get up and go. Yeah, yeah, we'll be having some fun. You know, I like what y'all were saying about squirrel hunting and small game hunting for these kids. Now, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you on that, you know. Mm-hmm. I believe the gun they ought to start out with is a Red Rider BB gun. Oh, yeah. with a thing that tells time in the stock? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then they just Absolutely. progress on up to a pellet rifle and then a twenty two rifle. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's I lots agree. of them, and they just miss out on all that fun, and they, they don't learn how to hunt. All they do is learn how to shoot. Yeah, they just sit in the stand. They're sitting in the stand and wait for something to come out to shoot, but they don't learn how to hunt. You know, you learn that out there in the bushes crawling around by yourself. Well, I know that one of the things that you described to me, Milton, and I advocate it highly, is just when you're in the woods, slow down. Well, that's Be true. Quiet. You slow Be down quiet. and everything will come back out. In a little way. You know, I, and I'll say this, and I know it's going to make some folks mad, but you know, a lot of... A lot of parents now, they're out there pushing them kids to kill a deer and all that just so they can have bragging rights. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, it's man, more that... of an ego thing sometimes for the parents than it is enjoyment for the kids. That sounds a little I'm telling like you, uh, sports don't sports sit well with me. Well, uh, you'll get a lot more shots on a squirrel hunt than a deer hunt. Well, you will, and then you need to bring that squirrel home and, and have somebody show you how to clean him and cook him, too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Cut them tails off and hang them on the wall. <laughs> there you are. Now, and then you idea. really have something to brag about. There you go. Milton, I'm glad you called, pal. I'm up against a break. Good luck Stop to by you. The stay, in touch over, stay in touch over the weekend. Much obliged. You bet. See you soon. We'll be back. 57 after the hour. Welcome back. We've got a couple of calls we need to get to before we conclude the hour. First of all, now let's chat first of all with Don. Don is calling from? Ocean Isle, North Carolina. <laughs> You're the greatest, man. What's going on with you this weekend? Ah, not too much. We got a, we got the uh, Shalot Point uh, 
uh, flounder tournament coming up the second uh, Saturday in June. Okay. And that tournament's been going on somewhere between 35 and 40 years. Oh, boy. And in the, in the early days, when, we, when I first got here in 92, uh, I cooked for that. I helped them cook. I didn't, I didn't finish the tournament. <coughs> uh-huh. And then later on, um, they turned it over to the uh, Shriners, and now they have it now. But uh, a couple of years ago, the flounders were sort of hard to find, but this year is is not is an exception. Boy, the the flatfish are in here and they're in good size. So, well, I remember. Sure I remember though, a good tournament. The, and the best part about that I, tournament is what they catch, they eat. So, oh boy. Yep. All right. Listen, uh, Memorial Day is a solemn occasion. Celebrate it in that fashion, and I will see you soon, Don. Okay. Love you, Joe. Hello, Gail. Mm. Hey, honey. See you good later. To hear from you. See you later, Bye-bye. pal. Bye-bye. There you go. Let's get to, let's get to if we can quickly. Let's get to Paul calling from Minnesota. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, O'Neill. I, I'm sorry, I'm so late in getting to you, sir. Time has been really f- fast today. That's okay. I'm on the way to the Turkey Woods. This is the last. Hey, all right, in Minnesota. Have, good. Have you gotten one this year? I have not. We were allowed one turkey, and uh, I went a couple weeks ago, and uh, this is a makeup week, so that uh, the sixth week is if you don't harvest in the first five weeks on your scheduled uh, week, you can come out and uh, try to fill your tag this last week. Mighty fine. Now, one question. Is that the eastern wild turkey, or what is he? And then I got to go. It's the eastern. Okay. Good deal. That's a tough one. All right, I got to go, pal. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, I, call back in the next hour. We may have some more turkey hunting to talk about. This is O'Neill with O'Neill Outside. I promise I'll be back for another hour of outdoors. From Black Powder Headquarters and the Bojangle Studio at Three Falls Cabin in the North Georgia Mountains, it's time for O'Neill Outside. For anything in the outdoors, this is your source. Listen in and call the show with your comments or questions. And now, here's O'Neill. Welcome. Yes, indeed. Here's O'Neill. Welcome to the program, everyone. From Three Falls Cabin and the Bojangles Studio, high in the mountains of North Georgia, welcome to the second hour of O'Neill Outside. Special guest this morning. Scott Maxim helping me with all my hard gun questions. Woman Williams is here. She has a headache, so she's not participating in a program at a high level. She's had uh, some very difficult uh, situation there with Facebook at O'Neill Outside, or did you get it solved? We got it solved. Oh, okay. Well, I knew you would, I think. 404-872-0750-800-972-8255 outside the Atlanta calling area. You can listen to us on WSB AM and 95.5 FM and the Sports Broadcast Nation from Seattle to L.A., to Texas, to Maine, to Florida, all across the country. 82 stations across the country that carry O'Neill outside. We have a lot of calls. We're going to get to every one of them as soon as we ask right after the first break. Here's a reminder. It's a three-day weekend. It's the Memorial Day weekend. It's not for people who just served. That's Veterans Day. The Memorial Day weekend are for the men and women in our armed forces that gave their lives during their service. Am I right, Scott? Absolutely. Basically? Okay. You are correct, sir. Yeah. Okay. So that's what this is. This is the Memorial Day weekend, and I've got uh, sometime in the program, you'll be able to see it on Facebook, I'll show you a very special gift that I have and the reason for it. Is that okay? I don't know that I would call that a gift. Well, what would you call it? A treasure. A, ah, well done. A treasure. Okay. All right. Get all set now, everybody. Uh, Paul and Eric and uh, everyone, get ready. I'll be getting to you in just a moment. So, Scott and Gail, Karen, Brian, and Corey, we're all set for another hour of outdoors on O'Neill Outside. So, I promise we'll be back. 
You're listening to O'Neill Outside, Saturday mornings, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., the number one live outdoor-based radio talk show in the world, and we're proud to have you on board. Let's get to the call. People who are kind enough to give us a call of this morning, and here is uh, Wade, I believe, is calling O'Neill Outside. Good morning, Wade. Hey, O'Neill. I'm up here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, but I'll be in Georgia before the day's over. Ah, ah, mighty fine. No, I'm coming down there. I got to take care of a little stuff going on. Uh, now, you got that gun guy there. I was going to ask him some questions. Okay. Um, the gun The gun guy is Scott Maxim. So is, Scott, that my yeah, official, I, is that my official I'm capacity? Watching, yeah, you're the gun guy. I'm the gun guy. <laughs> I'm watching you. Well, um, Scott, what I got, let me turn you down. On the, I got you. The delay messes me up. I'm watching you, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have got some Browning shotguns that uh brand new in the box, nineteen seventy two. The ones with the double screws, are are they more valuable? To be honest with you, I couldn't tell you for sure. Uh there are places uh, well, you can go online to look up gun values and Yeah, yeah, uh, I've done that. I've done that. Yeah. I took them to a gun show about three weeks ago over at Cave City. I'm in Kentucky. But the um the twelve and the sixteen, the sixteen's rare. But Sixteen's extremely rare. Why does it? I got two of them. I got one I'm shooting, and I got one in the box I'll never shoot. Right on. But, but the twenty, my buddy's got a twenty, and he's gonna let me have it. I'm 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 coming down to Georgia to do a countertop job for my friend's daddy. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I'm doing it because they're friends. I don't want to work, but I got to. <laughs> but I'm coming down there to do that, and I'm gonna grab that twenty gauge. Mm-hmm. Why is the twenty gauge so valuable? I, I think it's the gun more than just the the twenty gauge. Is it a, is it a rare piece? Did they not make many yeah, of it's, them? It's, it's it's a two thousand. It's a gas operated two thousand in a box. Yeah, right. As for value, the only thing I could think of is that uh, off the hand, without knowing exactly what I'm looking at, I, I got to think it was a limited run edition of the gun. Perhaps why it's That's so expensive. That's the likely explanation. I, yeah, I would think yeah. that would be the case. There there may be a, a a difference in the way it was manufactured or. Perhaps in the uh, in the furniture, in the stock, or, or whatever, there was a difference there. But what what you say to me sounds like it's a limited edition piece as to why it would cost so much. Yeah. Well, see, I took, I took the twelve in the box, and I took the sixteen. I got a sixteen in the box. I got sixteen out of the box, and I've got a twelve with a thirty-five inch barrel on it. That's wow. Well, he's loaded, isn't he? When yeah. I buy the twenty, I'm gonna, when I buy the twenty, I'm gonna have all three of them in the box. Mighty fine. Oh. Wait, I got to go, pal. I've got lots of calls here. Be careful coming down. And I want you to know it's summertime down here. I can tell you that, okay? I advise saying the bugs is biting and it's ugly. <laughs> Get ready to sweat, brother. You bet. I, See I'm you later, right, pal. I'm going to be right around the corner. I'm going to be right around the corner in LJ fishing this weekend. Yes, you will. All right. Mighty fine. All right, Char-truth now let's go. Uh, Chartreuse chick Okay, buddy. All right, let's see. He let's, let's see if I can do that. Uh, help me out there. Uh, there we there go. We now go. let's go to uh, let's visit uh, for a minute with Mac with the the uh, Dodge Ram fishing report. Good morning, Mac. Good morning. How y'all doing down there? Good there. You gonna uh, fish this weekend? You got business or what? Yeah, not fishing today. Got one of my daughter's home, so I'm gonna goof off and. Uh, oh, good for you. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, get my break there. Yeah, I don't get to see them much anymore. They all got all grown up and got busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know what that's like. So. Oh yeah, that's absolutely. Like, I wish my girls were still about four years old. Yeah, yeah, me too. I I, I miss that, but I'm proud yeah. for them and happy for them. But still, yeah, but miss them much. But anyway, for those who are going fishing today, okay, and it's been good, but it's changing. Ooh, As you can imagine, the water temperature really spiked up with this warm weather. We went up almost uh, about 8 degrees in a week on one year. When I came off the lake yesterday, we were 82 and a half. And the fish have responded accordingly. They're biting. Fishing's good. But if you're going today, you need to think summer. And we, I think here's the challenge. If, you fished, if you're fishing this weekend and you haven't been since last weekend or the weekend before, the patterns are going to be completely different. Oh boy, that's right. That was a, that was prompt, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, we we went from spring to summer, basically in a week, and the fish <laughs> went from up on the banks and doing springtime stuff to doing summer stuff overnight, pretty much. So don't let that catch you off guard. The striper bite on Lanier in other lakes has turned into primarily a downline bite, a live bait on the downlines. There's a good umbrella bite. 
uh, offshore stuff, you know, big main lake points, humps, or fish out over the river channel. So just be aware. That's where you want to look today. If you're bass fishing, the same thing. We saw the fish move from really shallow, visible structures to offshore structures or long, flat points. I caught some bass yesterday. I was striper fishing with live bait, but I caught some really nice spots on the oh. down line you know, over a 30-foot bottom. And that wouldn't happen last week. So that's don't, summertime. It, that's summertime. Yeah, you, yep. Well, if you're going on, it's good, but it's it's, all, it's turned into summertime deep water fishing. So just don't let that catch you off guard today. I got you. All right, great report. Uh, that'll that's that'll work for people who are going to go this weekend and over the next couple of weeks. It's summertime. It's summertime, and like I said, it's not bad. It's just deep water fishing, but it's good. They're ganging up. They're over the rigors of the spawn, and I actually think. This time of year is great for bass fishing because they're bunching up, mm-hmm. and spawning's really tough on them. And now they're kind of over that, and they're getting ready for summer. They're, they're, the water's warm, so they're jacked up, so they're really catchable. And it's good, just deep, that's all. And they're hungry. They are hungry, and they're ready to eat. Absolutely. Mighty fine. So get out glad, there and get after them. Glad you called, Mac. O'Neill and everybody else, have a great holiday weekend. Be safe. Have fun. We'll talk to you next weekend, brother. You bet, pal. Always good to hear from you. There we go. Now, let's uh, because he's been holding on quite a while, let's talk back to uh, Paul uh, with a Minnesota turkey hunt on the way today. Good morning th- again, O'Neill. Yes, indeed. Welcome back. So you're hunting the Easter, and this is your last chance. This is my last chance for spring. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, what's I'm the on temp- my way. Uh, what's I'm the temperature? Forward. I know there's been a lot of a uh, lot of turkey in these woods, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, this is your other than opening day. This is your best chance because most of the other hens are already on the nest. So the gobbler is lonesome. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, calling one in. When I was out uh, a few weeks ago, I did call in two uh, really nice toms, uh-huh. but they uh, they only got within about 45 yards, and I didn't think that was a good shot. And uh, I believe the uh, the tom decoy I had may have held them up. You know, uh, I'll, I'll comment about that. That using a decoy uh puts you know i i think it hurts as much as it helps i would say using a decoy at all is 50 50 but you you do yeah you do what you please and what works for you but just like always with my good friend roscoe reams what kills turkeys is patience yes i've heard you mention that before so uh and I'm looking forward to a great day in the woods. Uh, supposed to be sunny and 70 degrees here in Minnesota. Oh, wonderful. Good for wow. you. Now, you owe me a call next week now. Well, I hope I, uh, I hope I can tell you about the successful hunt. Okay. You tell me what went on no matter what. What do you think? Sounds good. We'll, we'll reach out to you again in a week. Good deal. Thanks, pal. Good luck to you. Thank you. There Have we go. Day. You betcha. Well, okay, it's twenty one, almost 21 after the hour. We're almost half through the second hour of O'Neill Outside. Boy, it's been fast. Man, oh man, has it not? Yes. 404 Why are you looking at me quizzically? Well, because I, we have a question on Facebook, and I'm to see if Scott understands it, because I don't. Uh, essentially, uh, is that Jose? Jose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the question is, good morning. What is the best 1911 gun for carry? Is that mean like, that's like a that's a carry. Name. That's a carry question. It's, it, you know, uh, oh. 1911 pistols, probably the most copied oh, it is? pistol in the world. Okay. Well, hold, let me hold you up. We'll okay. get to that. We got a break here in about 10 seconds. This is O'Neill outside with a bunch of people on radio. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> okay, 25 after the hour, you're back in tune with O'Neill outside uh, every Saturday morning, 4 to 6 a.m. 
And so let's see here. We're going to talk about coyotes for a minute. Well, we were. We need oh, to finish up Oh, we're still up in the middle of this the, other pistol question. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 1911. Um, yeah, Jose's question with regard to the 1911. Which is okay. the best one for carry? Whichever the one fits your hand. Yeah. I mean, that's the simple fact of the matter. The 1911 is the most cloned handgun on planet Earth. Oh, I see. And there are zillions of manufacturers mm-hmm. making them, from Kimber, who make the high-end, really tight-fitting, beautiful mm-hmm. 1911s, mm-hmm. all the way down to manufacturers coming out of the Philippines and Turkey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only difference you'll find among them is the tightness of the fit of the components and the finishing. You might see some rough edges on the interior of your slide with some of the quote-unquote lesser 1911s, but for the most part, there's not much difference among them. Their parts are interchangeable from manufacturer to manufacturer. It's a great gun in that regard, but as to which one's best for carry, whichever one fits your hand. Yeah, I I agree with that. Let's get to something briefly here, because we haven't discussed it on the show ever before that I know of. Why should not someone like yourself me and gail what why should we not carry why should you not carry yeah is there any reason that we should not carry in our current travels in in and around the city in and out of stores if we've got a permit why should we not carry if the only time I could think of off the top of my head would be going from state to state. Your carry permit is not necessarily going to work. For I'll give you, for example, here's a real-world example. Mm-hmm. My Georgia carry permit is good in Georgia and, and many other states across the nation, but not South Carolina. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So if I had to go to North Carolina to visit some family, I had to take my gun out of my waistband, stick it in the glove box of the car, and then carry on with my business, whatever I'm doing in okay. South Carolina. All right. And the only way to get up to speed on that is to go to a website and find out which states have what they call reciprocal carry permits, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. meaning that in Georgia, if I have this permit, it's good in Tennessee. It's good in Florida. But again, not South Carolina, not Arkansas. Oh. So okay. you have to be up to speed if you're traveling out of state with what the laws are for your carry. The only other time you can't carry is if you don't have the permit. Mm-hmm. You know, Or I would say this as well. There's some business you should see out there that say this is a gun-free business. Mm-hmm. Um, restaurants, for example. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say ignore them, but I would say respect them. Okay. If you choose to not carry your piece in that restaurant and you want to frequent it, that's all well and good. Me personally, I just don't go to the restaurant. Yeah. I Don't say if you, if it, it's my business to be able to defend myself, mm-hmm. and if you're not cool with that and I'm not flashing my piece in your restaurant, I'm sorry, you don't get my business, mm-hmm. and I will move on to the next guy. That's right. Capitalism at its finest. Make Capitalism at absolutely correct. So in those would be the instances I would say off the top of my head where, where carry would not be the way to go. Okay. If uh, And for you, honey, being a woman, I'm going to carry mine wherever I go. There you go. It's the great equalizer. I will not carry it to the courthouse, and I will not carry it to the uh, port, right. uh, airport. Mm-hmm. And, and again, but otherwise, yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's kind of like, why not? Mm-hmm. Well, if it's the whole point of concealed carry is keeping it concealed, mm-hmm. it's your business. Mm-hmm. You don't have to burn, uh, bust that thing out until such a situation requires it. And... 99.9% of the time, there is not a situation that requires it. Right. Absolutely. I, I, it would be a very difficult situation that dictated that you had to go beyond showing it. And, mm-hmm. yeah, the first rule before you get into that situation is get the heck out of Dodge. That's the, right. The, fir- the best way to avoid a fight is to avoid a fight. <laughs> <laughs> just don't get in it. No, and, and yeah, and that's it. And again, what I say when I when I tell people with carry, it's always best to have it and not need it. Yeah. Than vice versa. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's talk to Don. Is calling on line one on O'Neill out. Pardon me, O'Neill outside. Good morning, Don. Welcome. Good morning. Hey there. I was going to ask you about your uh, you Alaska radio trip. Down. Okay. 
Need to turn your radio down. All what right, do you need to know on, about on, our last? I'm sorry. I was going to ask you about your. Uh, need to turn your radio down, Don. It's off. It's off. Oh, all right, mighty fine. Okay, yeah, we're going to Alaska, out of Seattle, and a date I believe is June the 14th next year. Somewhere around. Okay. Somewhere around in there. It's uh, you can uh, for all of you who are listening, you can go to my website at O'NeillOutside.com or .net and go to the bottom part of the home page and there's a nice video there and uh, I think Don I think you should go what do you think of that hey yeah that's the reason I called I'm trying to I'm trying to talk <laughs> my my secretary in, into it you know uh, okay the, the, my uh, fiscal officer okay she, she's the one that's going to put, put the okay on it so but she all she's okay. been wanting to go to Alaska she hears me talk about it. I lived up there for three years, so. Uh, oh, okay. Wow. You definitely anyway. need to take her. Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah, know, that is, uh, Gail and I are fortunate to have been, in our younger years, we went to the Caribbean on some uh, uh, locally sponsored cruises, and we went to the Bahamas and all mm -hmm. kinds. But we've been to Alaska. This will be our third time. Two times before, and that's the best cruise of all. Now, is this an inside or outside or uh, this passage? Is inside. Or inside. Inside. It's passage. an inside okay. passage. It's mm -hmm. Seattle to S Juneau or Sitka and return. No, we don't go to Sitka in this one. We don't. I forget we, how we're. Yeah, that's the only one we will miss. Okay. But we go to British Columbia. We go to Vancouver on this one. All right. Yeah. And uh, we get to go to the glacier and all of that. It's it's just marvelous. Hey, if you have time, I would be Vancouver surprised. Go to the zoo over there. They had a fantastic the zoo? zoo in, I know in, about, in Vancouver. Uh, oh, okay. Gotcha. We're okay. going to actually uh, Bouchard Gardens. But yep. Yeah. We've, we fly into Seattle, then we exit from Seattle, inside passage, and then we return inside. Yeah, nice return. Oh, okay. Yeah, look it okay. up on the website. Get, yeah, that's, you know, and I will. I will tell you, okay, I have 30 rooms for this trip. Mm -hmm. And we're already up around 20 already, aren't yes, we? Yes, yes. Are you really? Yeah. Good. So okay. uh, don't, don't wait around. Make a deposit. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate the information. You bet. Come this off is a good one, pal. Come see me. Okay, I'll do that, too. <laughs> All right. Take care. You bet. Thanks, pal. All right. Glad yep. you called. 404-872-0758-9728255 O'Neill Outside. We've had as a guest today Scott Maxim. He's handled all the gun stuff. Uh, questions and topics. Uh, Woman Williams is handling O'Neill outside Facebook page. Anything going on there right now? Uh, just a lot of people like uh, the advice about the carry permits or our thoughts on the carry permits and okay. uh, that sort of thing. That was good. Yes, yes. Uh, and now we're supposed to talk the show's about coyotes. It's not all coming from me. I will tell you that, Scott. Uh, you know, varying inputs always helps. Yeah. You know, different perspectives. I, you bet. I'm not near the hunter or fisherman you are, by any stretch well, of the imagination. But, you know, by the same token, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if you hit the range as often as I do. Oh, no. <laughs> well, he doesn't know about guns like you do, no. No, uh -uh. no, I don't. And I, over the years, because of television, almost totally all of my hunts been with a muzzleloader. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one rifle here. After all these years, I own one rifle. But about five or six muzzle loaders. And a couple of ARs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people, Those uh, are people mine. that visit with us. I know you did it when you walked in. Yeah. Well, yeah. I see you got an AR next to the front door. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you betcha. Yeah, absolutely. No mm -hmm. no question about it. But, you know, it's funny, too. I've, seen, uh, I've been doing a little reading on the hunting side of things, and I've been seeing a lot more people using uh, AR pattern rifles in their mm -hmm. hunting. And uh, believe it or not, SKS. The yeah. SKS has come up a lot. Uh, I, I was reading some um, articles about uh, guys using them for hogging, 
going right. out hog hunting. Yeah. How about coyotes? Oh, for a coyote, it'll pick that thing up and put it right back down. <laughs> <laughs> it will lift that dog off the ground. There's no question about it. Uh, we need uh, we need some participatory activity with this coyote problem. Indeed. It, and it is a growing problem, I believe. Oh, absolutely. They're smart guys. These coyotes, they're smart guys. They really are. Oh, yeah. And they are ravaging the, the uh, fawns. Ravaging the fawns. And the turkeys' eggs. And the, and... Yeah, they eat the eggs. Uh, uh, the, the, and uh, everything in the woods is afraid of them. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing that that worries me about, and I do know they say trapping them is better. Mm -hmm. The only thing that worries me is that not everybody would be real sure of what's behind that target. You oh, know, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. because you you've got to be quick to shoot one to start with. You mean urban hunting? I don't know what that exactly means. In other words, oh, hunt, yeah. hunting in the city. Oh, well, that <laughs> too, yeah. I mean, if you're on the wildlife management area, but you still need to know what's on the other side of your target. You have to make sure you're shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, But that's the only thing that worries me. But then w- once you get them trapped, what do you do with them? You dispatch them. Well, that's for somebody else. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Call the DNR? You can. Mm-hmm. But you dispatch it. You don't. You don't catch a coyote in a hog trap. Yeah. You catch a coyote in a leg trap. Ooh. That's, that's, Sorry. I know. Is what know. it is. It is. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, Got to get out of here. Uh, we'll be back. We catch him. We'll be back in ten minutes with <laughs> the Medal of Honor tribute. Honor, courage, and strength of character. These qualities are embodied by the recipients of the Medal of Honor. Now let's recognize this week's Medal of Honor recipient on O'Neill Outside. Medal of Honor, May 25th. Richard Etchberger, Vietnam War. Etchberger was to direct bombing missions against targets in Laos and North Vietnam between November 67 and March of 68. He directed 27% of those airstrikes. In March 11, 68, the site became under attack from a large Vietnamese uh, force who had scaled the surrounding cliffs. By 3 a.m., middle of the night now, Etchberger and six others were the only surviving Americans out of the original night team. They were getting killed. Etchberger tended to the wounded, fought off the advancing North Vietnamese troops until a rescue helicopter arrived. Thank goodness. He then helped load the wounded onto the slings to be lifted into the hovering aircraft before coming aboard himself. He was the last one. As as the helicopter headed towards the airbase, an enemy soldier below fired one last round at the aircraft. It killed Etchberg. He's buried in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, and Interstate 78 was named in his honor. Richard Etchberger, Vietnam, 1968. Wow. You did good. Mm. You did good. Yeah. You did better. Much better than usual. Yes. I can't get through that. All right. It's uh, 42 after the hour. Do you right. want to show everybody your treasure? Uh, talk about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me... And may, this may give you an indication of one of the many reasons why uh, I get so emotional about the Medal of Honor. Let me get this for you. Uh, uh, Karen, Houston. Karen, <laughs> f- put the camera on these two over there. Yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yes. O'Neill, we should have gotten that down earlier. Can you reach it? Yeah, a little bit of logistics involved here. Oh, Not boy. a problem. Not a problem. Oh, there boy. We go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. You're almost there. Hey, okay. We got it. Well, this will show at least. Well, what, what O'Neill has in his hands, 
for those of you who are not watching on Facebook, he has the American flag that was on his father's casket. And this was presented to his mother on the day he was buried, December the 3rd, 1943. Mm -hmm. If you'll open that up a little bit. This flag is, uh, is, is a treasure, of course, but it is also... It only has the 48 flags on it because it was 1943. Oh, wow. okay. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, see if I can get it open. If you can open it, you might not be able to see it because it's it's, it's it's folded old, just as old, old, old piece. Yeah, there you go. And there it is on camera. If yeah, can I can see, see that. It. Yeah. He it's was a. a uh, my father was a, uh, an Army Air Corps. Uh, fighter pilot in training and he was sitting on the runway waiting to take off he was 21 years old and uh, another plane crashed into him it, he was killed instantly in a ball mm -hmm. of fire and the uh, the pilot of the other plane walked away from it right yeah he was cremated on in the plane yeah so and he was um, from 1943 o'neill had uh well your father had seen you um, two times mm -hmm. for about an hour. The first time for about an hour, and I think overnight the next time. And yep. that was, yeah. You know. He was a handsome devil, I'll tell you that. You should see pictures of him on the Internet. Yeah, he, he was. So uh, Wasn't that true of all flyers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all pilots. Of course, of course yeah. yes. He was sure getting enough. ready to, uh, the reason she went out there with O'Neill, he was four weeks old, uh, is because um, he was, finishing his training and he was going to be going to the european theater mm -hmm. yeah and he was just short a few weeks of uh finishing his uh, being out of training I wonder what he would have been flying scott good uh, question a uh, tiger what do you call it tiger cat as a uh, fighter wild pilot. Cat. mustang maybe mustang that's it mustang yeah. would probably be the one i'd the mustang think. yeah yeah single that's, engine oh good plane uh, okay, let's uh, let's get to some calls. We've got time for it, I'm sure. Let's uh, first up should be Jessica should be calling and uh, talking on the radio with O'Neill. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, O'Neill. Good morning, uh, Woman Williams. Yeah. Hello. This is Jessica Mooney. We're on our way up to <coughs> to Lula River in, in Raven County with my mm -hmm. daddy. Um. My kids have never been trout fishing, so we just kind of up and decided to go this weekend. Good for you. Yeah. Get that camera ready. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everybody's a photographer <laughs> now with your cell phone. On the Tallulah <laughs> River, above Tallulah Lake, or yes, it would be, but between, that would be between Rabin and Tallulah. Yep. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh. Jessica, are you, uh, are you Allison's friend? Yes, I was That's, just saying. <laughs> I, I recognize the name, yes. Well, y'all yes. have a wonderful time today. That's wonderful. We were driving by Joe and Allison's house, and I was like, and we were listening actually to y'all, so I was like, Daddy's like, well, why don't we just call in and just tell them? Because my dad is a big fan. He listens to O'Neill like every morning. Oh, so. that's great. That's great. Well, y'all have a great time. It's you a bet. wonderful thing to be doing with those kids. Now, call me back. Let me know how many you catch. Oh, we will, and we'll post pictures on Facebook. Okay, Please do that. Good deal. absolutely. Okay, First now let's That's awesome. yeah, let's uh, let's bring up quickly uh, Henry. Here's Henry. Where in the world have you been? Hey, is that Pepsi Max you got with you? <laughs> absolutely. And what's in my hand? <laughs> Pepsi Max. Pepsi Max. Yeah, you bet. Unbelievable. How are you, Scott? I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? Well, I just want you to know, O'Neill is the only friend that I have left that. When he was born, there were only 13 stars on a flag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Y'all known yourselves, uh, known each other a while. Yeah. yeah. You uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, I just wanted to tell you that uh, the last caller was talking about trout fishing. I spoke to Jimmy Harris uh, yesterday, and I just wanted to give our listeners the trout fishing up in the mountains right now is absolutely off the chain. Um, you know, we haven't had it, a lot of rain in the last 10 days, which is kind of unbelievable to, that we're actually saying that because it's been such a, a rainy season. But uh, the trout fishing up in and around uh, the North Georgia mountains on both sides and through Helen 
has just mm-hmm. been really, really rock solid lately. And a matter of fact, what's really interesting is Jimmy actually said that he's got stripers already up at Nora Mill, right up oh, against boy. the dam at Nora Mill. The stripers are up there too, so he's been uh, he's been going up there trying to harass the stripers behind his oh. shop so that they stop eating his trout. Actually, <laughs> there you are. So that that's what's going on, and uh, I'm heading down to the Carp Flats this morning. I'm uh, I'm hitting the Chattahoochee. I am staying away from Lanier. You know, they they had a report yesterday that ten thousand people are heading up to Lanier this weekend, and I said, Nah, I think I'm going to carp fish the Chattahoochee and, and get away from that. And I believe so, that. Yep, I do too. So, you know, I just hope everybody out there is safe and uh, be careful. And remember, if you happen to be a boater on Lanier or any of the area lakes uh it is your responsibility if somebody breaks down on the lake it is your responsibility as a boater to stop and assist it's not like a car where you see someone on the side of the road and they have a phone broke down and it's okay if you're on if you're on a lake and somebody's broke down it is your responsibility as a boater to stop and get give them a hand and tow them or whatever it is and i just want everybody to be safe this memorial day weekend I did not know that, but thank you for mentioning it. I hadn't thought of that in years. That's a you know, that's excellent you know, you, tip. You and I talked last last time off the you know off the radio about boating safety and how we lost a couple of fishermen a couple of weeks ago down yes, on the south did. end of the air. And I, I I just really wish that the state of Georgia, just like my old state of Connecticut, would make every boater take a boating safety course. It would I just agree. be. It, it would just do a marvelous, a marvelous thing for all of us uh, if right. that would happen. So it's funny you anyway. have to have a license. Uh, you have to have a license to drive a car, and if the speed limit is seventy, what is the speed yeah. limit for a boat on Lake Lanier? Yeah, well, there is. You know, some of those bass boats. One. There isn't one. Those bass boats. Some of them can actually do seventy, as yeah, you know. So, uh, but like I said, what, what, what our old state of Connecticut used to do was they said that anybody who had a boat registered over seven years, the past seven years, if you had a registration, you were grandfathered in to getting a boater safety card. But if you hadn't had one registered, you had to go to the Coast Guard Auxiliary and take a boating safety course. And I think it's a great idea. I I agree. I agree. All right. Call me. You guys have a great weekend. Pepsi Max, good speaking to you. You as well, (laughs) sir. Glad to hear from you. (laughs) Glad you called, Henry. We'll see you soon, pal. Now let's talk to, we've got time for this. Let's talk to Craig calling from Dallas, Texas. Good morning, Craig. Good morning. I apologize for my voice. I'm a little hoarse. That's all right. Uh, My stepfather was a paratrooper in World War II. Mm -hmm. And they flew, at that time, they flew the longest flight ever to jump into North Africa. It was 1,500 miles. Mm-hmm. From there, they went to Italy, and 550 of them were dropped behind enemy lines. Oh. Uh, only Supposedly, only 115 of them survived. Uh, it was just horrendous. The, the, uh, the group later got attached to Darby's Rangers, mm-hmm. but my stepfather got wounded in the ankle real bad and was sent back. And that's kind of that story. What he went through in training was just incredible. You know, the equipment they had back then was like uh, comparing roller skates to roller blades. <laughs> uh, they, uh, uh, anyway, I had, one day I asked him, and this hadn't been, this wasn't long before he died, I asked him what the bravest thing he ever saw was. And he said they were in a foxhole, and a grenade came in, and one of his buddies fell on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds sad, except for the fact that it didn't go off. Wow! Good. You know, good, I mean, good. there's 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 so many heroes out there, uh, particularly during World War II, that never got any recognition for what mm-hmm. they did. Absolutely. But yeah, anyway, absolutely. I just wanted to. I've been wanting to call in for a long time and tell you that story because he was uh, he was quite a guy. He must have been. He must have been, and I do thank you for taking the time to call. It's uh, It's been a while since we've heard from someone in Dallas, Texas, and we welcome you to listening to the program, indeed. Well, it's uh, it's pretty early here. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's an overnight show in Dallas. Yeah, well, I, uh, 
I, whenever I get up early, which is too frequently, uh, I always tune you in and listen to you because I love hearing some of the, the old country stories about eating raccoon and this and that and the other. And yeah. It's just, uh, you know, it's just Americana. But anyway, you I want to thank you for the show. Have a good, safe weekend, my friend. You too. And thank you for calling. There we go. Let's get to that one. And uh, all right, we've, uh, we're have we about to wind everything up, but uh, we do have another segment coming up here in a couple of minutes to thank everybody for being a part of the program. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, this is O'Neill Outside, 4 to 6 a.m. Saturday mornings on WSB and the SB Nation all across the United States. And for those uh, serving uh, in South Korea, North Korea, Greenland, whatever, Glad you're listening. All right, uh, we're about to wind it up. A little self-promotion headed your way. Go to O'NeillOutside.net, the bottom of the home page. You can see our trip to Alaska. Yes, indeed. In the middle of that home page, you can purchase, and I will sign and personalize O'Neill Outside. People in Places Along the Way, a book that's selling very, very well, and we'll ship it to you and sign the book in your behalf. In that regard, I forgot about this, in that regard, those of you, I need a favor. I'm asking you for a favor. Those of you who have purchased O'Neill Outside, People in Places Along the Way, if you purchase it directly from me, it would serve me well, if you would go to Amazon and offer a review, good, bad, indifferent, whatever the case might be, if you'll go to Amazon and offer a review of your reading of O'Neill Outside, I would consider it a personal favor. So, we're about to wind it up. Uh, Scott, thank you for your input in the program, sir. You made it very informative. Well, thank you for having with, me today. Uh, with a... Uh, with a slant and information on uh, uh, the firearms, pistols, rifles, and so forth that I would not have known, quite frankly, because, as I said, over the last 25 years, all I've ever used is a muzzle loader. You know, that's the only thing I haven't shot. Oh. Oh, my gosh. We'll have to give that a try. We could arrange so. that. I think so. Yeah, we'll have to give I that a enjoy try. That. I've, uh, I've uh, hunted with a muzzle loader from Africa to Canada to Argentina. And everything, all with a muzzle loader. Okay, yes, ma'am. We need ma people to have a safe weekend. And remember yes. that boat gas and alcohol do not mix. They do not indeed. Boat gas and alcohol do not go together nope. at all, especially with 10,000 people going to the busiest Corps of Engineers Lake in North America. Yes. Lake Sydney Lanier. Everybody have a great holiday weekend. And remember, please, if you can, the purpose of the Memorial Day holiday and celebration. Those men and women who had died in service to our country. See you guys next week. I once asked a mighty hunter a coming home from the field how he came to possess such mighty hunting and fishing skill. He said, I'll tell you a secret, son. I learned everything I know from listening to O'Neill outside on my radio. O'Neill, O'Neill.